hit the green. Go ahead and hit both of them. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now i got a quick question for you. Let's say this pontoon right here went under, it sucked. What do you think you would need to do to actually prepare for that? Or better yet, let's say that you were out here diving in the lake and it's about 100 foot deep at its deepest point. What type of plan would you need to put in order to make sure that your dive is successful and of course safe as well? Well in today's video we're going to explore exactly how we prepare for a dive and more specifically how we prepare for a salvage dive when there's a lot of variables that we have to account for to have a successful and safe salvage. So I feel pretty confident in saying that most training agencies talk about dive briefings and just how important it is to do a dive briefing before every dive. Whether you're jumping off a boat out in the ocean or you're just doing a local dive in your lake or your quarry system, it's very important that you and your buddy discuss what you're going to do throughout the dive. You know, what's the objective? What's your depth limitations? What's your time limitations? And it's really no different when we do salvage work and commercial work like this. We as a team do a dive briefing. We tend to discuss how long we're going to stay underwater and what hazmatic environments we're going to be dealing with and how are we going to deal with those hazmatic environments. We talk about the resources we've got and the equipment that we've got and how we're going to utilize it as a team to make a job as efficient as possible. And then let's take this case here. We've got an upside down vessel. It's a capsized vessel and the majority of it is submerged. So not only are we going to have to upright this vessel, we're also going to have to get it to where it stays floating. We're going to have to be able to pump the water out and do some rigging just to make our job a little bit more efficient and not run the risk or creating hazards where a diver could get stuck under this vessel. So we did a lot of planning for this particular dive. The first thing that we did is obviously we go down and we do our inspection of the vessel. We try to determine you know, what made it flip, what made it take on water, things like that. We're also looking for attachment points and all the other things that we've talked about in our previous videos but we're also kind of getting a game plan of how we are going to flip this vessel in a stable platform or flip it to where it's going to remain stable so that we can lift it up and actually use bags to hold it in place while we actually pump the vessel out. So as we're doing our inspection, we are basically at this point just simply looking for attachment points. We're looking for cleats on the side. We're looking for bow eyes, stern eyes, anything that we can find to attach to. Now, once we've got that, we are going to continue on with our dive plan by discussing it with the surface crew. And each surface member during the briefing stage is going to be designated a particular job to do. Now, during that particular job, everybody needs to do their job and not really step on the feet of others. We can all have our input and say, hey, I think this work, I can think this work, and we can all sit there and discuss it, but we need a generalized dive plan to make our job safe and efficient. And our team, guys, I'm telling you, I personally hire every member on our team, and we've got a great team. They all have their input. They all have great ideas of what's going to make things easy. Um, and no one's really a hero. You might have heard the, the phrase there's no I in team or no I in hero and that's true our team works as one whole unit and we all discuss what we're going to do and you know how do we stay safe and how do we make the job as efficient as possible but now that we've kind of done our inspection here we're going to come on up to the surface and we're going to continue on with our planning stage we're going to uh, tell the surface crew everything that we observed underwater and we're going to develop a game plan to uh, get this vessel up. 
Now, in short, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and strap the bags that are going to be on the bottom of the vessel uh, on the bottom of the vessel because this is very easy to do when the vessel is upside down like this. We can go ahead and get them in place and get them locked in and secured. And that way, once we uh, go to upright this vessel, those bags are already in place. We can throw air to them and it will literally hold it in position. Now, another thing to consider when you have a job like this is stabilization of the vessel as you flip it. So as we go to flip the vessel, we are going to stabilize it to the dock itself. So once it flips, it does not continue to roll. It'll simply lock into place in that upright position. So you're going to see that too here shortly. But once again, we have to do this as a team. Everybody's going to have their own role. Us as the divers, our job is to rig. That, that is our sole purpose is to go down, do the inspection, and rig the vessel for the lift. The um, CETO crew, their entire job is to run the pumps and to uh, pull the vessel with their vessel to to upright it and then the rest of the surface crew they're there to assist to give us tools to run pumps to you know whatever it needs to be done we all have a particular job that we need to do and we're all one team this is this might be two companies on this particular job us and CETO working but we work together as a team for the same end goal to get this vessel uprighted floating on its own and to get it out of the water and repaired for the owner owner. But now that we've got the rigging pretty much in place, we're going to go ahead and secure a couple of bags. And like I said, these bags, they're just going to be sprawled out against the, the bottom or the hull of the vessel here. And so that once it is uprighted, we can immediately throw air to them and that vessel will stay exactly where it needs to be in that upright position. So we're going to put one on each side here using those bands that we already strapped over to the vessel. And it's very simple. If you're not familiar with how these bags work, they basically got an anchor shackle at one end and if you use the belly band systems from sub salve like we do it makes things very very easy so you'll see just how easy it is to attach one of these bags um, and then we'll put a, a simple bolt through it, a little eye bolt through it and it locks it on there now we do secure the top of the bags as well and we lock them in place and a little bit of rope or a little bit of string will do that and what that does is that keeps that bag spread out in that that flat position there because we want as much lift as possible up underneath the hole and that bag shifting around it may shift it may move to the other side of the vessel it may actually even pull your straps around so once we've got that you'll see there's two bags on the bottom we've actually got another bag that's going to assist with stabilization we've got the vessel tied off to the dock and we are pulling the vessel with Cito's vessel and of course you'll see as it starts to flip over all it does is it pulls itself along the dock and it's also going to pull that vessel over and lock it into position. Now, once it's into position here, we throw the air to the bags to hold it in place. The straps uh, that are attached to the dock and the vessel, that keeps it from continuing to roll. There's tension on both sides keeping it pulled. And just as soon as we get the air in the bags, you'll watch. This vessel will literally pop right up into place. And this was actually a relatively easy job and we didn't have to pump a lot of water out but what made this job so easy was the planning that we did and how we briefed each other and how we discussed what everybody's job was and how we were going to keep this job as efficient i think a grand total two hours which is a, a very short day for us two hours from the time we got to the dive site to this vessel was floating on its own and of course getting towed by Cito. but once again guys Plan out your dives, whether it's a fun dive, a tech dive, a, a recreational training dive, or even a commercial salvage job like we do. Plan it out. Get a game plan. You and your team work together. Do a proper briefing. And, of course, it's going to make you more efficient in the water. And it's also, and most importantly, it's going to help keep you safe in the water as well. So there you go guys, as you can see, we had a very safe and successful dive. We were able to flip the boat and lift it. And by having those things put into place, made our job a lot more efficient and of course a lot more safe for us. We were able to protect the owner's vessel, not get any damage done to it. And of course we had a pretty good payday out of this. But guys, I want you to stay tuned in the future because we are going to be announcing our 
full week-long course on how to do underwater search and recovery and salvage. Now this course is going to encompass several different uh, certification levels for you. You're going to get a science of diving certification, you're going to get a search and recovery certification, you're going to get a night diver certification, you are going to get a public safety diving certification, and even a full face mask and communication certification as well. We're also going to be going over sonar training. So one of the days you're going to be going out on the lake, you're going to be running sonar, and you're going to learn how to read sonar, and we're also going to teach you lift theory as well. So you're going to get multiple certifications out of this week-long program, and you're going to be able to go out and do the same work that we're doing as well. Because if you like the video, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. If you got any questions on public safety work, salvage work, underwater search and recovery, drop me a comment down below, and I'll try to answer it the best I can and as quickly as I can. But as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business.